Okay, everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the PGA um, Zozo uh, Championship, which uh, is an early start because of the time change uh, overseas. Uh, it's going to be 7 p.m. tonight, uh, Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. So make sure that you, uh, that you get your lineups in if you want to play. The other thing to keep in mind for a slate like this is that it is no cut. Um, there are only 75 uh, golfers in the, in the field. So that, you know, some people like that, some people don't. But uh, nonetheless, uh, I've heard various theories about the way you're supposed to handle uh, that type of thing. Um, I'm just going to continue to do the same process that I always do. And I will say that uh, this slate is going to remind everybody a lot of last week's slate which had mixed results. I mean, we had some really, really good results and then kind of fell apart at the end. We really could have made a lot of money um, playing these middling builds. But the middling guys, while they made the cut, just couldn't quite get it done over the weekend. Um, so, uh, yeah. But you'll find that if you follow uh, my advice on this slate, you're going to end up with a similar type of idea. So for better or worse, that's where we're going to end up. So we're going to do it as the same as usual. We're going to start at the, uh, the top tier and we only do have four guys over 10 K, but interesting uh, to me is that only two of them rate playable for me at all. And one is Sun J M and the other is Xander Shofle. And it seems kind of obscene to say that Hideki Matsuyama and Colin Marikawa are both non-playable considering that one of them is 21% and the other one is uh, whatchamacallit, uh, 18% owned, but just the way that I analyze the models and the way I aggregate projections and the way I'm looking at these, at these numbers, it just doesn't lead me to those two guys. That's the best I can describe it. And I don't want to you know, get into the nuts and bolts of how these projections are made. Um, uh, I, I just, what can I tell you? I'm just not going to probably be getting to those guys. Um, but as I mentioned, I do think Xander Schofle and uh, Sun JM are, are perfectly uh, playable, even though they're they're both extremely popular as well. So I have M at 26% ownership and Xander at 27. So these are probably the two most popular guys on the slate. But, um, you know, I have more respect for their ability to get in there than the other two, uh, given everything else. Underneath that, you have a 9K range of one, two, three, four, five, um, what, six golfers. And the top play for me on the board is in this range, and that would be Cameron Young. Now, this is going to come as no great surprise. I mean, he's going to be very popular as well, but I do have him rated at the top, of, at the very, very top of my list. And it's actually quite a decent sized gap to the next guy. So, um, you take that for what it's worth. Uh, so Cameron Young is certainly my top play. And then you go down to Tom Kim, who is the, my next best play in the 9K range. Um, he, I have him at 20% ownership as well, so you're not getting a hell of a discount there. But those two guys I like. The next two guys in the 9K range I have is Hatton and Hovland, and they're both very similar as far as my ratings go. I do have you getting a little bit of an ownership break, on on um on Hatton. So I guess if you had to prioritize, I suppose Hatton would be the best one. Um uh and then we're going down to Corey Connors next. And once you get down to Corey Connors, you're really getting into guys rated outside my top 20 values. So you're really kind of kind of pushing it here. What I'm not getting any of, and sorry about this uh uh, Bobby, but uh, I'm not getting any Tommy Fleetwood in these builds uh, this week. You know, can't play everybody, and he's just not rating as, as highly as some of these in the 9Ks. So I do think Cameron Young is the best overall play on the slate without ownership considerations. Um, at 20%, I think it's fair. Um, I would not not play him. I still haven't rated it at the top, so yeah. All right, um... Moving down now to the eight Ks, um, that we have a quite a quite a few to choose from. We one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven eight K guys, and the top play for me at the top, at the very top of the list here is Cameron Davis. I actually 
I'm very suspicious of the ownership projection that I have here. I mean, I have them at only 11% owned and um, boy, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, but every once in a while, I do, I do get some guys that rate really well in the models that just get ignored for some reason. I don't think that, I can't imagine Cam Davis will come in at 11. I, I, I'm projecting, I mean, my own personal opinion is maybe it goes at 15, but, but based on the ownership projections I'm seeing around the industry and adjusting for, you know, uh, adjusting for, for accuracy and all this stuff, I'm getting an 11% ownership projection. And if this is actually the case, I mean, you, you got to really pound on this. So uh, Cameron Davis, definitely. And then the next guy having the 8K range uh, is uh, Davis Riley. Uh, excuse me. Uh, no, is Mito Pereira. And Mito, this makes a little more sense because Mito, I have him rated as a top five value, but I'm seeing 18% ownership on him. So at least there's some degree of efficiency there. The Cameron Davis thing kind of confuses me. But what I what I found over the last, you know, several years doing this is to just not question it and just just take the leverage. And if he's a little more owned than you think, okay, uh, you learn that for the future. But I think Cameron Davis is extremely strong, given everything I just said. Um, so Mito would be second best, but he's probably efficiently owned. Then you can have Davis Riley. And, and Davis Riley, he's another one who I, I – don't quite understand the ownership projection here. I'm seeing it only 9%. And I have him rated as top 10 value. So when you get that, I mean, you just kind of have to accept it. I mean, aside from him, there's also, there's a couple of others that I'm getting in, in kind of lower ranges, but it's not too often you get some in like the mid range that you get that kind of leverage with. So uh, I definitely, Davis Riley is a very, very strong leverage play. So Davis Riley, Cam Davis, Remember, we're talking about different ranges now, but um, we're only 75 golfers. So I think we can, we can kind of group some of these together. And then the next guy in the 8K range I have, I'm only going to really highlight a couple others. Um, Maverick McNeely at 8,400. At 10%, rated about 14th for me. Seems pretty, I don't know, pretty efficient. Maybe, maybe he's a little under owned, possible. Um so I think he's fine. Then I have Christian Bezadenud at flat 8K and Scott Stallings at 8,200. Um, these guys I have is basically, rate, you know, probably um, round down my 8K pool. And those guys are rated a little bit lower, but they're owned a little bit less, like 7, 8%. And I think that's that's efficient and fair. And, and I would certainly play these guys. Um yeah, I wouldn't dip down into say the Keegan Bradleys, um, or or I always talk about Tommy Fleetwood or whatever it was. He was he's a little bit higher. Um, I'm not getting any Siwoo Kim. I'm not getting any Thigala. Uh, no Hoagie. So there are some guys that you can X out of this range if you follow you know my 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 projections. Um, and again, the 75 golfer field, you don't need you know you you could if you X out a couple of guys, you're already in, you know, doing pretty well. We get in the 7K range. Uh, this is going to be a don't shoot the messenger type of recommendation here. I, I do like a bunch of guys here. Um, and pretty much all of the guys that I like are somewhat low owned. Like I like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys under 8K. And let me just see what the pool of applicants looks like here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. So there are a bunch of there's like 28, 29 guys. And, and considering that I only like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, that's not bad. I mean, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty concentrated, actually. And I guess I'm going to start, I guess, at the bottom. So my the, the, the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Like the sixth best guy I have, it's going to be like big countdown shows, is Alex Smalley. Uh, he is uh, 7,100. He's, you know, pretty pretty low owned at 6%. Um, and I think that's somewhat under owned given where I have him ranked. So I think he's, uh, he's a good one to use. And I have Lucas Herbert. This is going up from the bottom of my good 7K guys. We'll get to that. The, the top one later um 
I have him pretty efficiently owned, but he projects well. He's I have him about 10%. Um, and I have him rated pretty well, so I like him. Then you get to Mark Hubbard. So Mark Hubbard, I have him rated as my for one, two, three, like fifth best 7K guy. And I have him in only 6% ownership. So that's pretty good. I mean, now he's I have him overall like a top 12 value. So if you have him at 7% owned. That's pretty good leverage there. Um, next guy is Wyndham Clark at 7,200. I have him uh, projecting about 9% ownership, and I have him, you know, fourth best 7K guy and basically 11th overall, which is, I mean, this is really, really good. So I think he's a very strong play. And then we get to the top three. Um, so the th my third best play in the 7K range and my – at least for now, my eighth best overall play, um, just on straight value, would be Sepp Straka. And he is owned at about 12%. Um, so is that that great of a deal? No, but but it's but it's it's pretty it's pretty good. Okay, so definitely have him near the top of my 7K list. And you have KH Lee. Let's put then you have KH Lee. At 7,900, I have him as my second overall sub AK guy, getting ownership maybe 11%, but I still think he's gonna that's somewhat under owned given you know where I have him ranked. And then my top overall 7K guy, who's fourth overall and who's only getting owned like eight and a half percent. Sorry about this. I hate. To, I apologize in advance, but is the world famous uh, Emanuelo. Emiliano Grillo. Um, he's, you know, very, very volatile. He can look like he's winning and then end up just getting crushed. He can look like he's on the way to winning the championship and then put up a nine on a par five, which he did a couple of weeks ago. Um, so proceed at your own risk, but that's what I have. I do have him as my top overall 7K guy, fifth overall and, and ownership adjusted. He's eight and a half percent owned. I mean, this is an extremely strong play. And he's very GPP, you know. Uh, he's not going to just hang around 30th. Uh, he's going to give you a sweat one way or the other, you know. And what I like about him is in a missed cut, of, no missed, a no cut event, that the volatility kind of works for you here, you know. Um, even if he wouldn't, quote, unquote, make the cut after one or two rounds, he could still just pile up a huge, like, single round score in on Saturday and or Sunday, which you might not have been able to get to if it was a cut event, so. Uh, I do like Amalia Grillo uh, as probably my top overall play on the whole slate. Under 7K for me is just a whole pile of nothing. I mean, the first under 7K guy I even get to is my 36th ranked guy, which is just, just not – it's really just not that great. So for me, um, I'm probably not going to have to play any of these guys. So I guess to summarize, I'm out, you know, just for fun, I'll do a couple of a uh, couple little predictions for myself here. The winner of the golf tournament, I am going to say is Cam Young. Top guy under 10K to make the top five who is not named Cam Young. I will say, boy. I get. I guess. Who? Yeah, you know, I'm gonna. I am gonna dip down into the AK. I'm gonna say Cameron Davis. I think. I think this field is not that bad. I think he can do this. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I'm gonna bet both those guys to win. Let's do that. We're gonna do that in a minute. Should I do it now? We'll do it in a minute. Yeah, let's do it now. I have any money on my the sports book account? I only have five dollars in there. <laughs> Crap. Um, but I will. I will bet. I promise you I will. I will definitely bet um on uh Cam Young and Cam Davis to win. But you know what? I could just to be somewhat sharp. Couldn't see what the odds are. Let's take a look. Now, if I were really like one of those like super sharp guys, I would say, okay, what odds do I need to bet him and see if they fit those odds? But let's not do that. Let's let's just see what the odds are first. You know what's cool about this is that you don't get shut out of these of these bets. Okay, so what do we got here? So we have 
Cam Young only 16 to 1. Oh, that's no fun. What are we going to have Cam Davis? Am I getting like 30? 40 to 1. Let's go. All right. Th this, this will be bad. They're having trouble verifying my location, probably because I'm Zoom. But yeah, so I definitely like um, Cam Young as my favorite value overall. You know, maybe, what about Grillo? Can I do, can I bet Grillo at a million to one? Let's see. What can I get? Grillo, only 50 to one. I want you to think about that for a second. Cam Davis is only 10 to one less than, than this is a good bet, I think, Cam Davis. I'm on this. I am on this. All right. So uh, other things. Uh, top. 8K guy to make top 10. I already said Cam Davis. Um, so I'll give you another one. Yeah, we'll go Davis Riley. Why not? Top under 8K guy to make top 20. Who is not Emiliano Grillo? We'll go KH Lee. So, yeah, uh, I have a couple of takes here, I guess. Uh, hopefully they work out. And um, that'll do it. Good luck. Uh, and remember, 7.30 p.m. tonight.